What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and in this video I want to talk about the ever-growing disconnect between the people making entertainment these days, and the millions of fans suffering through seeing their favorite franchises being ruined in the process. Today I want to talk about the curse of what creatives call adapting for a modern audience. But before I begin, if you like the video, consider subscribing and sharing it to give my life meaning and hit the bell to be notified of future uploads. And now, let's begin. Whenever I hear that something is being revived or rebooted, instead of being hyped, I often feel dread and anxiety. This is because when it comes to industries like Hollywood or the ever-growing video game landscape, there's one term that can instantly sour anything when it's uttered. And that's when creatives say that whatever they're adapting will be changed for a modern audience. Whenever I hear this being said, it's just another way of saying that the people in charge are most likely going to butcher whatever franchise they're adapting. And the end result will likely be total ass cheeks. And it's getting to the point where for someone even as jaded and cynical as myself, I'm becoming numb and loathing whenever I see things I loved as a child being updated for modern times. This entire rant began as I kept reading article after article about what modern creators are up to these days. And to be honest, none of it made me excited or confident in what's to come. The first stake in my cold heart came from the publisher Ubisoft, who has been weirdly unwilling to reboot one of their prime franchises in the form of Splinter Cell. The blue balling of Ubisoft to fans has gone on for years, until recently when Ubisoft finally announced they'd be remaking the original Splinter Cell for current generation hardware. It seemed like an easy slam dunk, or it would be until this happened. See, in September 2022, the producer of the upcoming Splinter Cell remake, Matt West, announced that the game would not only be rebooted, but its story would be updated for modern audiences. And immediately this spelled doom for fans because whenever those two words are said in the same sentence, it usually means whatever's being updated will lose what made it special to begin with. The most recent example would be the Saints Row reboot, which Volition said would be a reimagining that would change its tone to fit within the modern audience era. The head of Volition even said, and I quote, we talk a lot about the previous Saints Row games, and we're very proud of them, says Jim Boone, Chief Creative Officer at Volition. We love those games, but we also recognize that those are games of a time. They made sense within that era. We were able to do things that felt good back then, but that tone is not something that we feel we even want to do today. This is basically corporate talk for, we are changing the foundation of what makes this particular franchise great so modern game journalists don't write hit pieces about us and call us bad names, basically. Look, Saints Row has always been crude, stupid, and insulting. I mean, it was meant to be the reverse Flash to Grand Theft Auto's Flash. A bastardization and somewhat of a parody of Rockstar's billion dollar franchise that would poke fun and parody the G. GTA formula. It's because of this goofy-like demeanor that it led to Saints Row becoming a very successful franchise in years past. But the reality is that in today's world, and I'm going to be blunt here, people are way too soft these days. I would even go as far as to say that there's a lot of people out there who get outraged over the littlest things and it's becoming ever more annoying as the years pass. And unfortunately, these people who get offended by everything that they don't agree with also happen to be in positions where they have some form of power as well. One of these is modern gaming journalists, you know, places like Polygon who think From Software doesn't know how to write female characters. Or Kotaku who apparently is offended by the Silent Hill 2 remake's main character being white with blue eyes and blonde hair. And that's because, and I'm not kidding, they are offended by this due to the protagonist in Silent Hill 2 reminding them of Christopher Columbus. I wish I was kidding. 
I mean, if the main character of Silent Hill 2 offends you because they have characteristics akin to Christopher Columbus, why aren't they writing articles about why Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII also has blue eyes and blonde hair? Or what about Princess Peach? I mean, look at her with her colonizer hair and her big Aryan blue eyes. That's it everybody, Princess Peach is officially a colonizer, you heard it here first. Ugh, <sighs> the point is that the reason why this modern audience BS exists is because a lot of these companies are deathly afraid of being painted in a bad light by these faceless, often annoying game journalists getting offended by whatever creative decisions studios make these days. And since it's like trying to walk through a field of landmines, instead of inciting the soy-filled fury of these gaming journos, companies instead decide to sanitize their projects in the process. But this then leads to properties like Saints Row for example becoming so far removed from what fans loved before that the end result is a product made for neither returning fans or newcomers. Ironically, by adapting your art to a modern audience, you end up making something for nobody. And the sales and reviews reflect this too. I mean, Saints Row reviewed abysmally, leading to the CEO of Embracer even calling it a disappointment. And remember when I said Splinter Cell was being adapted for a modern audience? Well, that situation just got worse recently too. It was reported that the director of the remake was not only leaving the project, but Ubisoft in general. Of course, Ubisoft went on to say that even though they lost their director, that his departure wouldn't affect game development. But of course, in reality, that's most likely a load of BS to disguise the stinker being cooked behind closed doors as we speak. It honestly seems like when it comes to modern adaptations of things we've loved, it's always being spearheaded by people that either don't care about the IP to begin with, or outright hate what they're working on and want to transform a franchise into something it never was to begin with. It was actually recently reported that the writers of the current Netflix series The Witcher apparently don't even like the source material or the video games. According to writer Bo DeMeo, who worked on the series and is currently writing the X-Men 97 reboot for Disney Plus said, and I quote, My general rule was you had to be a fan. No questions. I've been on shows, namely Witcher, where some of the writers were not or actively dislike the books and games, even actively mocking the source material. It's a recipe for disaster and bad morale. Fandom as a litmus test checks egos and makes all the long nights worth it. You have to respect the work before you're allowed to add to its legacy. I'm often puzzled by these decisions like why are you hiring people who hate something to adapt the very thing they dislike? This is why you'll never find me reviewing a racing game on this channel because I'm not a big fan of racing games. I mean, I like racing when it's in games as a side activity but I could care less about Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport. So if I was contracted to write a movie or something based on something I hated, that would be extremely bizarre and honestly very stupid. I get that you don't want everyone to be fanboys and not be willing to have their work be critiqued by others, but hiring people who hate something is just such a bad idea and yet it keeps happening. And it's really one of the overarching symptoms of what this wave of modern audience divisiveness that's ruining a lot of entertainment these days. I mean, it's gotten to a point where developers are so afraid of media backlash that they make stupid decisions like in Call of Duty Vanguard, which is a game set in World War II, you know, the era where the Nazis were the bad guys. Well, apparently having mentions of Nazis in a game set during a period full of them was somehow problematic. So much so that Activision and Sledgehammer Games didn't even want to name their multiplayer teams as allies or Nazis. Instead, it just says my team versus enemy team. Ah yes, Activision, I too remember the famous battle of my team and enemy team during the flames of World War II. 
where the gender-neutral they-them shock trooper shot freedom bullets into the skulls of those soldiers whose names we can't say, otherwise Kotaku will slander us in an article. Like, are we really so paralyzed and afraid these days that we're actually willing to allow everything we enjoy entertainment-wise to be ruined and bastardized so that someone's feelings don't get hurt? I remember the days when video games couldn't give less of a shit about what people thought about them. I remember when Activision had balls the size of coconuts when they made campaign missions like No Russian. Or Spec Ops The Line was willing to showcase the actual brutality of war when it came to the military-industrial complex and the brutality of innocent lives that paid the price. What happened to creative freedom? What happened to actually sticking by your decisions and embracing your beliefs regardless of what others thought? What happened to us? Thankfully, there are some bright spots in the miasma of garbage that is out there. We do have some game studios out there still willing to deliver amazing experiences that don't compromise or sugarcoat, like A Plague Tale Requiem which is an amazing follow-up to the sleeper hit Innocence and having recently beaten the game, I can confidently say that the follow-up perfectly balances the macabre brutality of life with the beauty of family and love. But for every Plague Tale, we seem to be getting more crap than ever before. We have Saints Row, of course, but also games like Gotham Knights, which looked outdated the moment it was revealed. And this is insane, and I'm not even kidding, that there are people out there who are mad that Batgirl, the single female playable character in the game, is actually an ableist because she recovered from her disability and was able to walk again. Let me repeat that people are actually upset that a woman in a video game was able to walk again and kick ass and have her own agency because she was no longer crippled. What clown world do we live in where this is an actual problem with a game? Like, what did people want? Did you guys really want Batgirl to be strapped to a wheelchair, zooming through the streets of Gotham at 90 miles per hour, drifting around corners as she chased down bad guys while strapped to her wheelchair? I can actually feel myself going insane reading these articles about how upset people are about things these days. If Gotham Knights decided to have Batgirl be in her Oracle persona and keep her in a wheelchair, I guarantee you the very same people complaining about her being ableist would complain that the game is a sausage fest and lacks female representation or having women in a playable role. Like, you can't win with these people, and I urge anyone who's making anything these days to not bow down to these critics. Don't sanitize or lessen your stories or characters because you're afraid of what some angry journalist is going to say. We are living in a time where everything you say is being judged. And honestly, what we need now more than ever before is for people to stand up and stop apologizing for everything. Stop bending over backwards for people who aren't even fans of the very things they complain about. Stop worrying what Polygon, IGN, or Kotaku will think about your game or movie or whatever else. Like, remember Chris Redfield in Resident Evil? That dude was a jacked king in Resident Evil 5. He was so tough, he punched a freaking boulder. I mean, who cares if that was unrealistic? That was cool as hell. And then the journals held their bellies and started complaining, saying, Oh, that's not realistic, and why is Chris so big? That's bad representation for guys out there who can't get that big. And you know what happened? Capcom made Chris go from Alpha Chad to Joe Schmo in Resi 7. And guess what? Everybody hated it. Even the journos did. But they were the ones who were upset that Chris was ripped in the first place. The point I'm trying to make here is that you can't please these people. Stop trying to make your art for modern audiences because what you think the modern audience is will only end up making your product for nobody in the end. Make horror games for horror fans. Make racing games for people who like racing games. And for God's sake, 
Hire people who actually care about the things they're adapting. Why is this so hard for people to understand? Am I crazy? Is any of this real? Am I in a padded room drinking Kool-Aid while we're living in a simulation? Enough already. I'm tired of it, man. I'm just, I'm just so tired. Anyway, I guess the point of this rant, of this video even, is that if you ever hear the sentence for a modern audience, just run and never look back. Because whatever it is that's being made with that mindset will be undoubtedly in the end an unredeemable steaming pile of crap wrapped in the disguise of progressive activism. And I don't know about you guys, but I for one am absolutely tired of it. <sighs> Thanks for watching everyone, let me know what you think in the comments below, and thank you for responding so warmly to my other, more social commentary style videos. Please subscribe and share the video to give my life some meaning in the abyss that is the modern world. Thanks to my patrons for fueling the insanity that is my channel, and I'm Endymion. Enough with modern audiences, we need more Chris Redfields punching boulders, more Lara Crofts shooting dinosaurs, and less whatever the hell they've been doing these days. Alright, I'm done talking. I'll see you in the next one.